Welcome to another week of Teaching the Savior's Way. This week we will be discussing how the Savior taught with power by teaching the Father's doctrine. And the skill that we're going to focus on is choosing appropriate media. In Teaching the Savior's Way, we read, Although Jesus grew in wisdom and knowledge throughout his life, he was not formally educated like other religious leaders of his day. And yet, when he taught, the people marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Why were his teachings so powerful? My doctrine is not mine, the Savior explained, but his that sent me. Doctrine is eternal truth, found in the scriptures and the words of Latter-day Prophets that shows us the way to become like our Father in heaven and return to him. Regardless of how experienced you are as a teacher, you can teach with power, as the Savior did, by teaching the Father's doctrine. You and those you teach will marvel at the blessings God sends when your teaching and learning are grounded in His Word. Sometimes formal education can interfere with our ability to teach in the Savior's way. His teachings were powerful not because He mastered the latest technology or had access to cutting-edge pedagogy. It wasn't even because He had a lot of experience. His teaching was powerful because it was pure truth communicated from the Father. This year, Elder Anderson addressed seminary and institute teachers. The title of his talk was The Power of Jesus Christ and Pure Doctrine. He invited each of us to purify our teaching by following the Savior. Let us keep the doctrine pure and simple. What we truly know about our Heavenly Father, our Savior Jesus Christ, our pre-mortal life, our Father's plan of happiness for us, our privileges of faith, repentance, and ordinances, we know all these things, our need for commandments, covenants, obedience, and endurance, and our promised blessings beyond this mortal world, all these things are so beautifully clear. We should never feel the need to go beyond the mark, as the scriptures teach. We center our teaching on our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and their revealed doctrine to help our youth increase faith in them, become converted to them, and to receive their promised blessings. Elder Anderson then gave us three warnings beginning each with the words, be careful. In keeping the Lord's doctrine pure and understandable, be careful to stay within the bounds God has established, avoiding the errors that come through speculation and non-doctrinal personal ideas. Such ideas can be very enticing to some, but do not have the force of truth that strengthens faith. Be careful that accounts and stories you have been told are not embellished. Try to assure that the scripture or statements you are quoting are in the context they were intended. It is easy to be drawn to something new or intensely intriguing beyond the edge of our understanding. Stay within the safety of the pure and simple doctrine. Be careful with your choice of media personal stories and object lessons. Used effectively, they add interest and depth. If overly emphasized, they can distract from your teaching. The method can overshadow the message. It's on this third point that I would like to provide a recent example. President Nelson's conference address, Think Celestial, has resonated with members of the church on social media. This simple phrase is loaded with implications. However, I have seen the message overshadowed in the ways that others choose to display it. Recently, I saw a meme of President Nelson floating around on social media. Many of the comments on the meme were humorous and garnered some LOLs and crying laughing emojis. I wondered if this was the intent of President Nelson's message and if it were possible to create a meme or image that would communicate the pure and simple doctrine of thinking celestial. I am going to display two different pieces of media sharing President Nelson's invitation to think celestial. As you view these, I want you to consider these questions. 
is the doctrine of the Father plain to see. What is distracting? What is instructive? What is appropriate? What is communicated? What might be miscommunicated? And will this invite a deeper conversion to Jesus Christ and his restored gospel? As we ask ourselves these questions while we're preparing our lessons, we will be able to purify our teaching and communicate the sweet message of our Savior and our Heavenly Father's plan. It's my prayer that we will elevate our teaching to match the pure and simple Savior's way.